On today's Men of the Apes, Richard will never hear this tease because he never listens to the podcast. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Minute of the Apes, the daily podcast where we break down every minute of the Planet of the Ape movies, one minute at a time. <sighs> Across from me is my dear friend, Sean. We can do this. Because we're doing it together, because we look over at the guy with the flowing red hair. The man. And we realize he's never once listened to a single thing that we do. How many episodes? <laughs> okay, so Sean and I did maybe 30 without you before you joined, so you have done approximately 600 and something episodes of yes, the podcast. Sir. Yes, and sir. You, you've... Let me get this right. You've we never should. listened to one. <laughs> we should. Well, uh, d- well uh, d- follow up with what Sean then asked me after that. I said, have you ever listened to a podcast? Any and podcast? your answer was? Not all the way through. <laughs> I I think, you know, I think out of curiosity, I, you know, there was like a CrossFit something or nerd something where maybe I would listen like 30 or 40 seconds of, of it and then didn't care. That you have to understand, I am I'm He's busy. I am at the He's a very store busy boy. or coaching somewhere between eight and twelve hours a day. And I'm not in a place where podcasts can be listened to. I'm at the store where music is being played for customers. I'm at the gym where I'm actually doing What are you saying? You're not playing our podcast over your speakers at the work so people hear our and w- do you have the QR code like up in the store so people can find Men of the Apes? And oh, Jesus. <laughs> don't this is this is not a call me out. It's not a call me out thing. But I don't I don't play podcasts in the store. I, we right. play music in the store. I just want people to be happy shopping music. I don't I don't do that at the gym. Uh my live three to four minutes from everywhere that I go. So it's not something that I put on in the car. And when I'm at home, I, I probably have a little bit of time on Sunday when I'm actually at my desk where I could probably do something with a podcast, but I don't, I don't Monday through Saturday. I'm always moving. To be fair, as you were going through that, I thought first I'm, well, I'm going to slap him around this because I can go and say, I, I do my regular job. I'm in how many bands am I am? Mm-hmm. I do this podcast with you guys. I just told you. In fact, I think you probably heard the tease at the first this. I'm contemplating putting a tease out that my friend and I are starting a new podcast called Jeff and Todd Make a Movie. We're working together with a script that we've worked on, and we're putting things together. We want to kind of tell that story of how you do that and whatnot, right? So I've got that one, too. Right. And I sit there, and I think, okay, Richard, I'm busy, too. But then I started thinking, I purposely, the only time I listen to podcasts is when I go for my, I go on a a two-and-a-half-mile walk every day. So roughly about 30 minutes. And I listen to a podcast. Now, you flip over to our other friend over here who's like, hey, have you watched this? Have you done that? The man consumes more. I And a lot of people look at me and think I consume a lot of shit like that. That guy. And I think you would agree with me. So I've got. He is uh, a nonstop <coughs> suck in of everything pop culture. I've got mm-hmm. 20 hours and 25 minutes of podcast to listen to. But I listen to it at three times speed. And I can't do that. I, I've tried it, and that just drives me borderline I mean, yeah. crazy. Well, my, my, my husband works at home. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. My husband also takes walks. My uh-huh. husband also likes yeah, to. Yeah, I work at home. My husband will occasionally do dishes when I he's got downtime dogs. between stuff. And so what he does is he has something almost always on and playing when mm-hmm. he's at his desk, mm-hmm. when he's going for his walk, when he's doing some dishes or some laundry. He'll put his headphones on, and he'll listen to a podcast. He'll listen to music. He'll listen to all that kind of stuff. But for mm-hmm. me, just having that quiet moment, I don't have those moments And where that's I, the key, a quiet moment where it's 100% just you and only you that you could do that. That. I'm always in, at the store. I'm always in front of people. When I'm at the gym, I'm always in front of people. Um, I get up at four. I feed the dogs. I'm immediately out the door by five or sorry, four forty-five. Right. It's just I'm always going. I mean, that's not an excuse, but that's just that's, it's your, that's it's the your life reality. I've chosen. Yeah. And I, th- I think that it is you know a little bit that it, a lot of people will ask about the podcast and what I tell them all the time is what it is to me is three friends getting together and talking, yeah. shooting the shit, and and it's not anything more than. But what's funny is a friend did send me. Hey, I mean. I don't want to call it. He's like, I was on a podcast and I listened to it and I'm not trying to go, Ooh, and I'm not saying our podcast is beautifully produced or that our camaraderie is just, 
impeccable. Damn, we're better than what yeah. I listened to. It was like, <laughs> I listened, I was like, oh, that's hurting me. It's hurting hey, me. It's hurting me. Speaking of which, why don't we do a podcast about Yeah, the news? Wait, so we, we want to talk about Aves? Uh, we're only five minutes in. Do we not want to go on a little bit more? Well, okay. that means we're just going to talk about the well, depends upon what Well, it depends upon what happens with this minute. And it also depends. We've got a mouse I, down. I, I sent my mouse flying over there. So it's minute 106 while I work on the mouse. Sean, tell us what's going on. All right, we're going to start minute 106 with Davison checking on Pericles and ends with Limbo pulling a Yoda and stealing some All shit. All right, here it comes. Minute 106, while I fix the mouse, Planet of the Apes. You okay? You came home. It's safe. Come out now. What, it's over? No, I, I, I was just getting ready to make my move. We will leave the graves unmarked. No one who comes here will be able to tell apes from humans. They will be mourned together, as it should be from now on. As a minute 106, we have an Oberon's worth of apes and humans, two displaced pods worth of humans and apes, so many wild humans and apes in the minus two gorillas, and a pod has arrived as a battle pauses. All right, so visually, we get Leo getting into the cell with Pericles. Pericles down there, a little knocked up and injured, but he picks him up. Oh, the buddies are back together as they step out of the, the thing, which, by the way, how many times did they have to shoot that where Leo probably bashed his head and take <laughs> that he didn't use? Leo steps out with Pericles in his arms, and then... He looks over his shoulder and tells someone they can come out, and there is Limbo, who is suddenly in those cages. We cut outside to the Oberon, and everyone's together. Ari's laying on the ground in the weird sand and just pushes uh, sand over the face of her... Crawl. Crawl, of her buddy. And then we get Atar talking about the humans and apes will be buried together. Everybody kneels. Limbo has gone over to the uh, pod and takes something from it and puts it in his pocket. We see Leo coming up behind Ari carrying Pericles, and that is the end visually. So I, was, I, think, I think the first monkey in the cage we get to talk about is the Limbo moment. Oh, what? my God, dude. You, so there, there's really not much here with no, Leo. No, and that's the reason I'm other, well, other, other than Pericles being okay. Well, yes. that, I was, was glad, the, yeah, because yes. we didn't know if Pericles is true, dead or true. not, so I'm glad Pericles is alive. Yes. yes. So Very we get so. Pericles alive, but then there are two things to this. It is, it is Leo knowing that Limbo's in that cage. Why? He's never seen anything, and we've never seen anything about Limbo it's even just, being in the vicinity of this area. It's supposed to be comic relief, yeah. But the, it's supposed to be comic relief, but this the thing that... The thing that the the way the moment is so quiet and the way the moment is done and the fact that this is probably the first time we've seen Leo unclench this entire movie. True. This is the first moment he showed any type of humanity or or anything to to Pericles or anybody. He just seems right. relieved. He seems happy. He the actor himself even seems casual. Right. So when he leans over, it's safe. To, it says it's safe to limbo. And always. I was about to make my move. It feels like it was that moment when you're watching the bloopers at the end of the film mm -hmm. and every, a whole cast just starts cracking up because it right. was an ad-libbed moment. It doesn't feel like it was meant to be in the script. It really felt like it was that. Well, was it in the script? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, end, the end credits, basically, when they have that blooper moment, right? right. It, didn't feel, it didn't feel natural. It also feels, I, I think at this moment, were, were the, the previous moments constructed correctly? If we had seen... You gotta see him flee the battlefield somehow. Well, if we'd seen Atar, <clears throat> like, I, like I asked to see, you know, espousing some of his religious beliefs so we actually understood the religion and not just bow your head, but understood it. If we then saw the Senate, if we saw all these things, this would be a very heavy moment that should be just allowed to, in my opinion, linger with that humor. I don't need the limbo humor moment. Mm -mm, I think it's no. actually out of place. It's like, oh, wait, now we're going to be yuck monkeys again. It's just, it's silly. And we, it doesn't work. No, I mean, it doesn't work. Particularly, You're right, because we're coming off of, we just have, we now have um, Thade huddling in a corner 
we have a victory moment, if you will, but it's really yeah. it's about it's about Pericles being fine. And and that the, should be a tender moment that carries us. I don't need the humor behind it. Well, and then we jump outside and we get the, we get the kind of the the um uh we shall have the apes and the humans buried together and there'll be unmarked graves. That was kind of a jump. That was a it weird a jump. weird yeah. jump I mean, from Pericles to this funny moment to going outside. Yeah, I mean the whole first of all, she barely covers Crawl's face with mm-hmm. sand, which you know, a strong breeze is just going to blow that stuff off again. That's why you bury people deep, not right. just a shallow grave. Right. And then we're not going to be able to tell people apart. Um, apes have different body structure than humans. Have different shaped craniums. Their arms are longer. Their legs are right. shorter. We're going to absolutely know who is a human and who is an ape. And if they buried him deeper, maybe not. Yeah. But it is. It's a weird little moment. And I'm assuming this is a forbidden area, and so I'm. Now the area isn't forbidden because people not. are going to be able to come out there and not tell human from ape. Well, I also find it weird that they've already buried them, and that's when we proclaim this. It should be that somebody's digging and starting it, and, you know, I don't know. It just is a very weird proclamation that, again, Atar is jumping all over Adar, the place with Adar, his beliefs. Atar ought to be fucking freaking out because he killed his mentor he's betrayed his friend right his entire religious belief has been changed um he why isn't be... ari the one that says in that in, in that situation yeah. he's freaking out ari could say to him don't mark you know don't like, mark either be, one we were together in he this. should be reaching for the bottle at this point yeah. i mean he should be maybe and shell shocked and that's why ari could be his buddy at this point ta- yeah. talking maybe they form a, an alliance here oh richard looks shocked He's putting together a thought. His eyes are crossed. What? For for a big blockbuster action adventure sci fi film, mm-hmm. was that the end? Was that it? Thade firing a gun they, off, and flipping and off, hiding. and going in the corner, and then him picking up Pericles, and we're just walking out, and the movie's done. Is huh? this is it done? We still because have... this is really a weak ending. We didn't defeat we, an army. We, we have seven we, minutes. Of we movie really proper. didn't even defeat a villain. It, it and and everything's just like fine now. Okay, well, I, sorry. I'm, movies, I'm just really thinking about this. I'm used to I'm used to like a big battle or a big well, something, well, okay. some resolution to kind of so, get us to this moment. And there's just there, it's it just petered there, out. There's yeah. a theory in a movie like when it's over, you need to get out as fast as you can. You know, Rocky, he wins a fight. He calls for Adrian. They hug. That's the end of the movie because mm-hmm. the fight is won. You, but then you have the off the off the other version where you have the last Hobbit or Lord of the Rings movie where they defeat Sauron, the ring has been melted. Right. Then you have a half hour of everybody going back home. Right. So I mean, it could have ended right when they hey everybody won, movie's over. This one it's we have a battle, but then everybody's got to linger around for another seven minutes bullshitting with each other. I, Shelly and I just I got her caught up on Ted Lasso last night and that, I finally got an Apple Plus account because T-Mobile gave it to me for oh free. good have so, you watched Ted Lasso I'm saving that JJ didn't have to watch that very day. sweet yeah. very beautifully written but the end of season two she never watched the final two it it does the idea and I won't tell you what mm-hmm. but it, it it allows for little jumps of time but the, each one feel like a little vignette that I need to complete it this is one of these things to this point where this just feels this should be, if well, anything, this should this should be a passing comment as they walk off in some place where there's the the horizon and they come together. But to stop down and do this, it just feels well, like well, the problem what is, the you're, fuck? I think we're, I mean, you, I, you I, are going to compare it to the first movie. So in the first movie, you know it ends with a big twist. Mm-hmm. So you're thinking to yourself, well, what's supposed to be the big twist with this? Well, it's not Earth because mm-hmm. he's not he's not on Earth. So mm-hmm. it's uh, it's not it's the future. But apes, I mean, it just. I, so I was I just it didn't even occur to me. He has nowhere to go until just now. Right. When we're talk, talking about this movie, like oh, wait, it's done. Yeah, that was it. What else do we have to do? We have discovered everything we could possibly discover. He he can't. Do we, he doesn't what, have a, a ship to go to because his ship has crashed. The next thing is to find out, I guess, whether he stays or whether he leaves. And if he leaves, where does he go? I mean, that's and, and that, also we don't know anything that's really changed. This movie, what what has changed outside of Atar now is confused about religion that we've never again. We don't know his religion. We don't know the constraints of this world. The first film we knew they hunted humans. The humans were stupid. Th- they were stupid. They did science experiments on them, and then maybe Taylor has exposed some of that but then what he finds out he was the, the problem all along mm-hmm. what the fuck has leo found out he and has not found out a single thing about himself and that I even if he of. even if he well even if he found out that the humans are the humans from the ship and the apes are the apes from the ship uh 
the apes back in Ape City, mm-hmm. even if they hear that, what is that going to change for them? They still aren't going to like the humans, or they're going to love the humans. Their attitudes are not going to change yeah. just because they found out that they came from outer space. I mean, right. Atar did magically become king. I mean, what? Yeah. We I don't... mean, yeah, if they dies. Who's in charge? They now? have to the go Senate? back and deal yeah. with. They have to go back and deal with people that have had this long-standing disgust and hate of humans. And it's not going to change overnight just because a human told us that they that we came from them. And maybe that's what's missing. Maybe that speech is missing. Maybe that it's speech funny. where I was just thinking that same that thing. speech that Leo or Atar have to together to the people that are assembled there that maybe that was the conclusion that i needed and right? maybe maybe it's because i don't see leo ever being the hero of this and I, I don't think he wants to be the hero maybe he looks to atar in their new form of friendship and says to him you know those things and actually gives a better explanation and he and he's like how do i how do we let the people know and he's like they're your people you let them know and then that would that would that be atar, would be, yes the ascension you know and here he is and he's the leader of it and they they believe in him and he has a new faith in their shared humanity and apedom whatever no you're right it would it would need something like that moment i'm sorry i can't believe it just recorded like we did, this didn't resolve itself. It's just kind of ended. It, it's done. What happens to Thade? Yeah, Thade's meanwhile, just he just to, stuck yeah. back in the in the control room. They just yeah. leave him there forever. And we know that the twist is coming, and I will say that at 32 seconds, they do at least set up that there's something here that there's still a gun, in a way, in the shot in 32 seconds. Yeah, and then uh, we get Limbo again coming yeah. out and stealing from the... Uh, that, I was like, okay... I. If I were if I were going through this movie, the first thing I'd cut is Limbo. I, I outside His of the, 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 the very first, yeah, he's not needed after those first moments. Mm-mm. He doesn't yeah. do anything he, he, except he's, not, he's, he's the Yuck Monkey. He, he he needs he's no he's irrelevant to anything after the he could have stayed in the city. And and you do that in movies where you have an actor who just shows up for two or three moments and it's a name it's a, actor. Yeah, cameo. Yeah, yeah it, it it may be a little more than a cameo, like a little small you, feature. You would have there was no reason for him to be chasing them down out in the jungle. Uh, None. Uh, he could. You have him at the beginning where he captures. You have him at the party. Right. And then you have him that little scene of him doing his shower upside down, and then maybe they run through his room and scare him, and then that's the end of Limbo. Yeah. Because you you don't see the the um, Lisa Marie and the other senator anymore. They were only in the, in the beginning of the movie, so you don't see the senator anymore, um, David Warner right. anymore. They were just in the beginning of the movie. You don't have to have Limbo through the whole movie. It, and you want to say something? I was say, I was also kind of just confused with it, uh, Atar and. Ari and everybody else are just suddenly outside. Oh, the that, way, and the way know, she's laying on the ground, it almost looks like she's battle damaged. It, it, we, we needed them all to kind of emerge from the Oberon victorious. Agreed. Yeah. To the assembled audience and something happened there, not just magically be outside. That would have been a great shot something. if they all came out of this, you know, Mecca-like area yeah. and they came out with a new message and they came there and stood before them. And, and it's and think of that shot. You 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 could say something if they came out and here are apes and humans mingling together, waiting to hear the truth that has been learned inside the Oberon. Seeing them all walk, see how powerful that would be for them to walk out with Atar. Yeah, and Atar and Leo are there, and they're you know clearly together, together. and they, they've found something that puts not the holding apes in, hands, not having right, 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 but, but they're together. Something that's put the apes and humans together. Uh, Atar could put his hand on on Leo's back, right? Something just to show that. There's now unity among the right. tribes of apes and humans. I'm brought to mind as I watch this the the old screenplay thing where you you know it's an onion that you have that you slowly peel back the layers until you get to that core. Mm-hmm. It feels like they would peel back layers and then put them back up because it, there is I at this point I also don't really I know Leo is my main character because they've cast him and we've followed him, but he's not done anything to make me follow him at this point and that's why i feel lost i don't know who i'm supposed to be excited about i don't feel sorrow as Ari pushes the sand over her dude's face they've done too much and, and again if we got rid of limbo it's one less thing we've gotten rid of the kid estella don't need her no she's yeah. she's irrelevant at this point too and i think that's one of the reasons that poor actress probably gets beat to shit over this movie is the role she's given not the performance her performance is fine when she's on camera yeah, but no. it's just this film doesn't make sense because they've not gone linear. They they could have they they really could have removed so much of this other cast right. and made focused made a better story. I look at Star Wars. It is Luke's story, but you also peel away Owen and Baru. You peel away these things until you get to the end. You're still adding layers in, but it is about him. This movie's 
don't know what the fuck it's about. Yeah. We talked more about this minute than I was expecting. Well, look at that. We are so good at podcasting. You know what? You would know that if you listened to it, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> See what I did? I just hey, bookended hey, the whole moment. Hey. All right. I think that's it for today. We will be back tomorrow with another minute that I'm sure that we will not understand why it's there or how it works. But until then, everyone, have a great day. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.